Thank you, Senator Scott. Senator Peters, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Alvin, uh, it's good to uh, see you again, and uh, congratulations uh, to both you and your family uh, for uh, this nomination to become our, our next uh, Chief of Staff of the Air Force. Um, I just want to uh, first to just quickly acknowledge something that you and I discussed uh, in my office uh, earlier, and that is uh, recent steps uh, by the Air Force to install treatment systems uh, in Michigan, uh, which is uh, a welcome and certainly a, uh, the right direction to address the PFAS uh, contamination uh, we have in our state. So again, I'm, I'm pleased uh, with the uh, initial action that's being taken. However, I also want to stress, as I stressed with you uh, at length, uh, we don't need to go over it again, but uh, at length, that there's still more work to be done to uh, expedite uh, these uh, cleanup efforts. And I'm going to continue to hold the Air Force and other federal agencies accountable for protecting public health in Michigan. And as well as ensuring that uh, Michigan's defense installations, particularly Selfridge uh, Air National Guard Base, uh, remain central to our national defense and long-term uh, strategic goals uh, as well, and look forward to, if confirmed, future conversations uh, related to that. But my question for you, uh, General Alvin, is that during our visit, we briefly discussed innovation and opportunities for the Air Force to expand and speed up autonomy development for the uh, next generation uh, air dominance platform as well as the uh, collaborative uh, combat aircraft. And given your comments and concerns uh, for ensuring the Air Force uh, can outmatch uh, and outpace our adversaries, my question is if confirmed, would you recommend additional testing and training sites where the Air Force can test, integrate, and validate autonomous mobility for next generation platforms? And I'm asking uh, this question uh, because given the CCAs uh, will be an, uh, an autonomous platform, to me, that seems to open up the possibility for changes in the standard Air Force uh, operational test and evaluation doctrine. If you could speak to that, please. Yeah, Senator, and thank you for that uh, question because uh, uh, as I look forward, I really do believe that central to our success as an Air Force and quite frankly as a joint force, I believe will be our ability to tackle and, and really leverage autonomy and AI in, in the battle space in a responsible manner. We're starting down that path, and associated with that, to your point, uh, operational test and training infrastructure is gonna be key. As we evaluate what will be required and what the, the uh, systems and the associated ranges and airspace that will be required, uh, we need to look at those that are not just perhaps in, in the traditional uh, testing ranges, but I can see opportunities for more in the synthetic environment or perhaps more in the actual environment in different ranges. So while not uh, wanting to commit to a certain thing, I believe that that is going to be part and parcel in our transformation of understanding how one can move uh, uncrewed aircraft in a different airspace in a different environment. Well, thank you for that and uh, look forward to working with you on that. And in the spirit of innovation, partnership and collaboration, I want to highlight a recent conversation that I had with Assistant Secretary Chaudhry, who recently attended Exercise Northern Strike in Michigan. The Assistant Secretary seemed particularly impressed with the Michigan Guard's ability to host and lead a, so a multinational, multi-component joint force training exercise using assets like the Selfridge Air National Guard Base, as well as Camp Grayling and uh, basically the vast uh, physical space and spectrum that's available uh, in northern Michigan. So my question for you, sir, is, uh, is if confirmed, how would you resource and budget for joint force exercises like Northern Strike that can provide invaluable opportunities for airmen to train with the, not only the joint force, but uh, with our foreign partners as well? Well, Senator, first I would say that uh, I'd like to add my congratulations for how successful Northern Strike continues to be, because this isn't the first year. Obviously, it's been very successful over the years, continues to grow. And as we continue to look at different ways of, of supporting the joint warfighting concept, I can see these particular exercises being particularly useful. Uh, I also want to congratulate the Air National Guard for how they do, they sort of host all of this and bring it all together from a joint perspective, which shows that, again, we are a total force, Air Force and a total force joint force. Uh, if confirmed, I will continue to advocate for these types of exercises that can advance on our joint warfighting concept. Uh, the Joint Staff J-7 also is one of those elements that has uh, looks over their joint training exercise program. So if confirmed as a, a member of the Joint Chiefs, I will also look to work with them to ensure that our joint training exercise program 
uh, leverages all of the capabilities and all of the competencies for things like Northern Strike to be integrated into our exercising and, and uh, training going forward. Great. Well, thank you, General. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Peters.